went to Ham House the other day, end of uh, December, it's in Surrey, upstream from Richmond upon Thames. It is owned by the National Trust and in recent years they have allowed permitted photography inside their properties but no flash or monopods and tripods either, not even those miniature ones. So you are very much on your own, you've got to hand hold. So I thought you would like to see the technique I have employed both in photography outside the swell and also what I do with the images after I've taken them in Adobe Lightroom. So if you excuse me just for a moment, I've just got one or two more to uh, correct on the computer. Ham House is 17th century, built in Stuart, England for the Duke of Lauderdale. It is now in the care of the National Trust and close to London, open all year. Parking is limited, but if you take the train to Richmond, a very pleasant level one and a half mile walk by the River Thames makes the perfect prelude and of course postlude. The low December sun presented some interesting and challenging lighting scenarios. The south front of the house received good light most of the time. The hidden art, however, is waiting for that magic moment when there are no people, and that may take a bit of patience. Any shadows cast from the trees in the wilderness are across the lawn known as the Platz, but take the central path leading to the park gates and there is a classic retrospect view back to the house framed by two statues. They are in shadow and are likely to be all winter. The low midday sun also gave some interesting modelling to tree roots bordering the plats. Because the highlights are a very small part of the overall composition making spot metering difficult, the same effect can be accomplished by reducing the EV to a minus value, sometimes as much as a whole stop. An electronic finder helps to make the right judgment as well shooting into the light up the avenue towards the wilderness, avoiding highlights overexposed in camera. The garden and the grounds may not look their best in December, but there are little corners that can still spring surprises. The cones in the cherry garden might need a seasonal haircut, but the hornbeam tunnel down the east side still looks attractive, heightened by zooming in a bit to contract the perspective. The light striking the trees in the kitchen garden close to the wall was from a sharp angle, projecting some intriguing shadow patterns on the contrasting brick wall, its strong ochre hues perfectly complementing the angle of light. Time to pop inside! Whilst I have been on aperture priority, mostly at f8, which Olympus tell me is best for overall quality, I did switch to program inside. Now, whilst I am no longer in control of shutter speeds and apertures because of low light and keeping to 200 ISO, again for quality, it will default automatically to a wide aperture. I am using the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II and the 12 to 100 Pro lens, and both have image stabilizers, absolutely essential for hand holding. By the way, when using this combination, be careful that you do not accidentally move the IS sliding switch on the side of the lens, as this will disconnect both stabilizers. Also, keep an eye on the sliding ring at the front of the lens. This is very handy for switching quickly from autofocus to manual, but many a good photographer has been caught out.
You can usually wander around Ham House at will, but you start at the bottom below stairs in the kitchen, and oh boy, is it dark, and big choices have to be made. Apart from relying on two image stabilizers for sharp images, if a window is included in the composition, the dynamic range becomes enormous. And I do like to see through to the garden and not have a blown out highlight in its place. If I could use a tripod, I would use HDR. I think some of the latest Olympus cameras permit hand holding with HDR. I should have tried it, but maybe that technology can be tested in a future YouTube program when I get the chance. Nevertheless, to control the extreme dynamic range, I chose to spot meter near a highlight and then correct in post-production. Getting those kettles right was easy, but the room with the wheelchair was another matter. Because I have bumped up the shadows, there is noise, which I like to think adds a touch of atmosphere. But we can see through the window. There is not a blown out highlight there. Here is the Lightroom panel, but at this stage, I have not attempted to reduce noise in Photoshop. Upstairs, the dynamic range was less, but where possible, I was anxious to avoid Christmas decorations. I don't like transient features in images that date them. There are some erotic paintings on the stairs. Guess where I spot metered. Nearby, there is panelling, providing an opportunity to get in close. The ceilings in the white closet and Duke's closet posed no exposure problems, but rather than take a straight record, I tend to go for a different angle at wide angle here, 12 millimeter, that is 24 in film. There was vibrant color in the withdrawing room, but I was careless in the adjacent room where there is a stray highlight, which I should have noticed. The chapel was impossibly dark, but in desperation, I tried auto. It pushed the ISO up to 6,400, allowing a shutter speed of a tenth of a second. I have mucked about with it in Lightroom, but the noise, oh dear, the noise is absolutely horrendous. When visiting National Trust and English Heritage properties, I always buy the guidebook as it helps with cataloguing. Lightroom has a wonderful system where I can find any image taken over the last 10 years in 10 seconds, but you must label each image. It is good too that some National Trust and English Heritage properties remain open in winter. We encountered many people to the extent that when we visited the Orangery for lunch, not only was there a long queue, but some items on the menu were no longer available. Oh well, another time, even the best plans don't always work out, but at least the photography was good.